Hey, I'm Jay Beershank. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're here for another edition of Book Reviews. Thanks for joining me. I ran up this hill, I'm a little tired. Today we're gonna do an especially esoteric one. On this channel, I haven't reviewed that many esoteric books, spirituality books, because I guess when I started doing book reviews three years ago, I was kind of at a point where I didn't want to read any more of those kind of books. So I wanted to get into more dense, time-tested novels. So if you, as you'll see in my channel, a lot are kind of classic novels. But before I was into classic novels, I was more into soul-searchy, meaning-type books. And uh, maybe in the future I'll go back and review some of the old ones that I've read. Like, I really like Way of the Peaceful Warrior by Dan Millman, that's a good one. And like, A New Earth by Eckhart Tolle, the one's trippy, but it really influenced me as a young guy. But anyway, I'm starting off with this because um, to talk about this book and to read this particular book that we're going to review today, you sort of have to allow yourself to step into a different realm of thinking and viewing reality. And this realm for me was one that has been cultivated and built over a very long period of time, like basically for the past 10 years, I guess, or 11 years that I've been kind of doing my best to understand what's going on with myself and other people in the world and whatever you want to call that. Uh, yeah, spirituality, philosophy, meaning, all these kind of things. Anyway, so the book we're going to talk about today is the book of Merdad by Mikiel Nami. Or Nami. Um, this book was never in my realm of thinking in my consciousness or in the collective consciousnesses that I had been through, the people I'd met. Um, but this book was uh, phenomenally insightful and phenomenally accurate to where I've been led to after this 11 years of soul searching and trying to understand my connection to something other than this body and this kind of an idea. So yeah, um, I'll give a little context. The author of this book was, uh, I believe, Lebanese. Uh, he didn't write many books in English, but he wrote this one, maybe some other ones. Uh, he was great friends with Khalil Gibran, the guy who wrote The Prophet, which is another great book. Uh, they were in the same writing group, and they, I believe they're also great friends and influenced each other, influenced each other greatly. So you can definitely uh, see that this man has uh, spent a lot of time to develop the ideas that are conveyed in this book. And to give you, I'll give you a short rundown of what's going on in this book. So basically, there's a monastery, and out of nowhere, this man comes to the monastery, um, and he is a very insightful spiritual teacher. And what he is teaching is basically um, kind of like the no good, no bad type of idea, but in a much more beautiful way where it's like, the way to oneness is through not being uh, pulled or allured or passioned into polarities. And to me, uh, a polarity could be good or bad, or another polarity could be nothing is good or bad, or everything is good or bad. So even the idea of viewing good and bad as absolute or uncertain is a polarity. And the way that he discusses it in this book is uh, beautiful, but it's super metaphorically dense. And I think for anybody to get any kind of practical value out of this book, you have to allow yourself, like I was saying earlier, to step into a different way of thinking and viewing uh, yourself and reality. Because the way that the teachings are given throughout the book is from this guy and when he speaks he is speaking from that place and if you're not in that place when you're reading it you think hmm this is very lofty not practical uh extremism but really um the way that i was viewing it is like yeah you know as humans we'll never be able to necessarily eradicate certain thoughts from coming to us and certain feelings from coming to us but what I believe is that we can um, build a port within ourself that isn't conducive to harboring these types of thoughts and feelings. And the way that he kind of describes this in the book is that port would be like the port of what he calls holy understanding. So when you have a port, a port is a state of being or what you allow 
inside of yourself and outside of yourself. It's kind of an abstract idea, but anyway, when, you're, when your port is a port of holy understanding, misunderstandings like thoughts and feelings in, in the polarities or mm, certain things that you feel drawn to do through passion or anything that's driving you a certain way out of this middle point um, would be considered a misunderstanding and when your port is one of holy understanding you would never be able to harbor those for very long not because you're sending them away but just because when these misunderstandings are docking in your port they don't really want to stay because your port is not conducive to harboring these kinds of feelings and thoughts and I think that honestly I don't need to say much more about this book that is the main idea and I just came up with this port idea uh, or an analogy when I was driving over uh, it wasn't even pertaining to t the book because I wasn't thinking about the port idea in regards to how I was going to talk about in this book review because these book reviews are always pretty you know candid I'm just talking about how I've been thinking in the moment but the port idea came to me about an hour ago because I was thinking like my state at this point in my life is really nice I really enjoy it um, and what's so not but from perspective of others sometimes they can say like you know, it's idealistic or unrealistic that you would never feel bad or unhappy or be able to experience negative emotion. And I was thinking, how would I describe that to someone? And it's like, yeah, I can, I can harbor these feelings and thoughts, but they don't stay long because the port I've built is not conducive to them. And uh, that's what Murdoch is trying to teach with the idea of holy understanding. So that's the book of Murdoch. Um, there's really not much more to say about it. I could get into the plot and like some of the specific things that he talks about, but really uh, the book is 180 pages and uh, he covers many different topics with his disciples because um, that's kind of how the teachings are structured as he's giving these talks to the people who are in the monastery with him. And they go over many different subjects and like ideas, but in my perspective, it always kind of went back to this idea of like, yeah, the port that you're building uh, enables you to harbor holy understanding and that's his whole point is like how can we manifest this holy understanding to be prevalent in our lives and how we interact with people and it might come off as idealistic and unrealistic that someone could live like that at all times but that's not the point to live like that at all times it's just the point to be able to experience that majority of the time so yeah I guess that's my perspective on this um, if it's a little bit too out there I don't know I'll watch this video after I post it and see what I think about it but yeah that's my review of the book I recommend it highly the book of Murdad by Mekiel Nami if any of you guys know Osho I've never read any Osho but I think he's from China he's like a philosopher from China and this is like the one book that he said uh, everybody should read if they're gonna read one book in their life it's this book and uh, yeah I got this book from one of my friends uh, and yeah I'm very glad about it. <laughs> Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe. Take it easy. Stay in the light, stay in the love.